very much uh, for accepting me here, inviting me here. And uh, I would like to also address you. Actually, I was asked with a specific question and to give you an answer in my, say, welcoming speech. This is not my core topic, so I prepared some speaking notes, but I will also try to look into your faces occasionally from my paper. So dear students, organizers, representatives, dear all, I have been asked to ideally kick off this in my speech with an answer to a question. What would I like people, you, to understand or know about the climate change, which most don't know? That's a tricky one, because, you know, Climate change, or as we now more fittingly say, climate crisis, is one of the greatest challenges of our time, and it is not a new concept. Uh, so there is a certain assumption that you already know plenty of things about it, right? Such as that climate change is not just about warmer weather temperatures, that it is a complex phenomenon uh, that affects many aspects of the Earth's systems, including oceans, land, ice, and atmosphere. And it can cause changes in sea levels and extreme weather, such as hurricanes, floods, droughts, and of course, other consequences, such as mass migration. Of course, there are still plenty of people that would feel necessary to debate whether it is caused by humans or not, but I hope we can skip this part here. We have been aware of this issue for several decades now. Unfortunately, it has not been taken as seriously as it should have been, or our attention has been swayed by various actors. And with that, let me address the topic of individual actions and the lie of carbon footprint. Individual actions on climate change, such as reducing personal energy consumption, using public transportation, electric vehicles, are of course important steps that can contribute to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I want this to be very clear at the beginning. You can and you should reduce your amount of fossil fuels that you use. And you can and you should be happy and feel good about it. However, these actions alone are not sufficient to solve the problem of climate change. Moreover, individual responsibility has been abused by the bigger polluters to shift our attention from them to us. Now the story time, my favorite one. In 2005, the carbon footprint term has been invented uh, as something describing the amount of CO2 person generates based on their personal actions. You've probably heard it since 2005. The term has, however, not been invented by experts, not even politicians, but by BP, British Petroleum. Yes, it's a fossil fuel company. And this company, which also dumped 200 million gallons of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico, by the way, it also dumped millions of dollars into publicizing the term carbon footprint. It was a marketing masterpiece, really. British Petroleum succeeded in getting people to blame themselves for climate change instead of oil companies while burning 12 million times more fossil fuels than an average person does. And their campaign was so successful that environmentalists now took over the carbon footprint concept as a way to solve the climate change. Although 53% of your so-called carbon footprint is actually burned without your consent or even any way to influence it because it is created by infrastructure or services provided by states or companies. The biggest source of pollution greenhouse gas emissions is mainly caused by burning fossil fuels, oil, coal, gas. Greenhouse gas emissions are driven primarily by industrial activities, such as energy production, transportation, and manufacturing, which are controlled by large corporations and governments. Not being surprised here. And these entities have the power to make systemic changes that can have much larger impact on reducing emissions than can individual ever have. As I said, it is still part of our responsibility too, but you know, these companies, they claim they are doing their part, but they, they spent millions in the US, for instance, on shutting down the carbon tax proposal. Or, as reported in Europe by Political and Guardian, they also conspired with each other to slow down development of electric cars and other more fuel efficient vehicles. I'm not here to act like certain Donald Trump and say the system is rigged. 
And I, and I don't expect you to start rioting, uh, although that would be really cool. Uh, but with our personal consumptions and these companies, we all need to take action. However, we as citizens have only elections, strikes, demonstra demonstrations, petitions. These companies, on the other hand, have millions of financial means, corrupted politicians in their pockets, yes, unfortunately, and of course, unlimited media space available to influence the system. So the system might not be rigged, but it is certainly not fair play, obviously. So systemic ch changes are needed. Governments and businesses have a critical role to play in, an, in enacting these changes. The clock is not five to 12, but five past 12. And the measures we have to take, or are planning to take, might seem radical, or at least based on my e email box, people think they are very radical. But we must ask ourselves, what is more radical? Taking bold steps to protect our planet and future, or facing the reality of an inhabitable planet. As some of you might have heard, the European Union is currently rustling some feathers, fade out of combustion engines, the most radical one, uh, zero emission policies in cars, in buildings, in other areas, investments into renewables, of course, 455 package. As I said, I get hate mail on a lot of topics like that. But alignment of these bold steps that EU does with national politics is crucial and national states, as you might see in our politics, gets to be a little bit more rigid and constrained. So what would I like to, you to know about climate change? First, that carbon, food, carbon footprint is a lie, uh, but you know, it is now a little bit too late to call it, call it out. So don't feel too stressed about using the term now. Just know about it. That's why I told you the story. I want you to know how it came to be why carbon footprint is now a term, so that you watch out for any future attempts like that to manipul manipulate you by fossil fuel companies. And what can be done about it? Well, first and foremost, try to educate yourself. I know it's bothersome, but try to educate yourself as much as possible. And you might find that there are plenty of lies and manipulations like that uh, about carbon footprint along the way. Try to also Think more about marketing and why you like certain things and why you buy certain things. Yes, I'm looking at all those of you who have elf bar in your pocket. No offense, be addicted to whatever you, whatever you want. Just know why you are addicted, all right? And be brave about it. Don't be afraid of others' reaction if you strike or protest. Be super annoying about it too, please. Meme the heck out of it. Body your family at Sunday's lunch. Talk about it all the time. We really did not get to the actions by the EU just by being silent. Also, join fellow communities uh, because advocating together means being lou louder and stronger, really. We cannot really wait for someone else to fix this problem and we can expect many wars to worsen this problem, either, of course, unknowingly or very well aware of that. So it is our common responsibility, but I promise you it is really worth it to live on this planet. Thank you. Thank you.